Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Let's call this meeting to order. Uh, announcements reference compliance with open meeting law. We are in compliance. Okay. Public Comments during this portion of the agenda must be limited to matters on the agenda for action. If you wish to be heard, give your name for the record, the amount of discussion, as well as the amount of time, and any single speaker is allowed may be limited. Okay, hearing of the possible action approval of final minutes by referring to the regular minutes of April 26, 2012. Motion to take the minutes. Okay, has everybody got, got a copy of the minutes? Um, no, not much. Oh. They were there in the Oh, they were emailed? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Take a vote. Those voting in favor. All right. Okay. Those in those in favor of approving the minutes from April 26, uh, 2012, say aye. 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 Motion is carried. Don't continue to ask those without revision. All right. I opposed. Okay. All right. Let's go to five. Discussion and possible action regarding the installation of street lights on Bunker Common Court. Okay, um, Mr. Chair, the, uh, the request for street lights on Bunker Common Court uh, came to the City of Las Vegas Traffic and Junior Division earlier in uh, the year 2012. We uh, uh, reviewed the the area, uh, because of its uh, little different nature, this was an area that originally uh, the uh, residents or uh, the developer had asked that street lights not be put in so that they could have uh, dark skies and see the stars. Uh, but recently we had a request to consider having them installed. In the process, council uh, required them to provide the infrastructure for street lights in case a future event uh, occurred where they would want to have street lights installed uh, and we would have funds available to install those. Um, we did a, we got a petition from the uh, majority of the neighbors. We then contacted every property owner uh, on the block in the area that were making the request. Our responses back, um, were positive. We, we had one person who said they wanted street lights, but asked that the street light pole not be in front of their home. Uh, so we're trying to see what kind of adjustment we can make because it just so happened that uh, the street light pole originally was going to be right in front of their home. So we're looking to kind of make a slight adjustment. Uh, we're looking at four street lights uh, being installed with this project. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the majority of the folks who are in favor of having the street lights put in place. Okay, floor is open for any discussion by the members. Mr. Mr. White, uh, Mr. Clinton, can I have a question about your uh, report? You said that uh, you were prepared to make adjustments for this homeowner. The objective, what were those um, Move it closer to the property line. Instead of being in front of the home itself, move it to, to right near the property line so that 
it wouldn't be right in front of the home. So there would be funds uh, appropriated for that already? The, the funds are available. Um, it's just a matter of, because the, the foundation of the pole hasn't been set yet, we, we still have the opportunity to set it in the location that would uh, still work. Because our, our, our biggest concern is we want to make sure that we have the appropriate lighting for the street. And if it was moved closer to the property in line, as you suggest, would it be acceptable to the property owner? Uh, that was our impression. And we, we, we sent out a notice so that uh, about this meeting so that if there were some additional concerns that they could come in and express them to the commissioners. And we only have one person here and he's the individual that actually started the uh, request. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, just, just as a point of clarification, um, when the development came in, the developer did request that he waived the, the responsibility. Uh, the request when we went through the council was a deferral, and so he was required to put in the underground infrastructure for the future street lights uh, at a time when the residents would request the street lights, and he was required to buy funding for that future installation. So there wasn't a waiver that would provide to it, it was a deferral, because at that time the desire was to have non illuminated streets, but knowing that someday in the future that could change, and so the infrastructure was put in place and the funding was provided by the developer and set aside by the city in the simplest time. And that's how it's being played. Okay, what's the timetable when this happened? Um, I have Neil Rowetta here from our uh, uh, field operations section, and, and he has a better handle on the actual timetable. Uh, Neil Rowetta, Traffic Engineering Field Operations Assistant Traffic Manager. Um, our timetable where we've been in discussions with the contractor. Uh, we're going to be hiring a contractor to finish the underground work to put the foundations in. Uh, once that's completed, um, the city forces will come back and pull the table in. So we're uh, estimating the contractor finishing our work within the next 30 to 45 days and uh, within two or three weeks thereafter, so about two months as well. Okay, now like uh, this previous mention, we're talking about four street lights, right? Correct. And there's only one person who was not happy, but that's been resolved. Well, she, she indicated on her um, approval response, uh, you know, in other words, we sent out a letter saying there's been a request for a street, the street lights to be installed. Uh, are you in favor or not? Plus, you can make comments. And her, her, her response was, yes, I would like to have street lights, but she had a comment that said, not in front of my house. But she didn't want the pole in front of her house. Uh, and that was the, the, the difference. Uh, other, other than that, she was in favor of the street lights. And all the rest of them? There was no other, no other uh, resident made a comment. All they said was approved. The, the, all the response we had uh, other than that were approval. So if I understood you right, we'll see, you went back to her and made some compromise that she was in agreement with by relocating it so it wasn't in front of her house? Uh, we, I'm not, did, did you get a chance to meet with her? Mm -hmm. No, we did not meet with her. We, since the foundation hasn't been in play, put in place, mm -hmm. we had the ability to, to move it over uh, maybe 10, 15 feet. <clears throat> Uh, and so we were looking to move it closer to that property line so that it would not be in front of her home. As a way yeah, well, I think you need to get back to her again and show her exactly what you plan on doing before you start putting it in. If she's objecting to it, let's get, let's get a clear understanding of where it's going to go and she's not going to have the problem with it. Um, well, um, we, we can do that. Um, we had the folks that were that got together as neighbors have they have kind of talked about this because they, they're they're all going to work together and uh you may want to ask mr callahan if uh if, you know the response that he had because he has talked with all of his neighbors okay. well, my name is Callahan. I'm a homeowner in the neighborhood. Yeah. There are 22 homes involved in the neighborhood. Two opposing cul-de-sacs. Uh, anyone put 
three legs on one end and one on the other. The other one's a shorter cobra cut. My understanding of talking to the young lady, and I've always spoken to spoke her one time, however, I don't think she objects to, to the light. She doesn't want the pull yeah, to open the other house. I mean, that, that, that's my impression. Yeah. I don't think, and I, I, I agree with you, Maybe somebody should call her and say, "Hey, we're gonna move to the property line. Is that okay?" I don't, I don't know if that would be a problem, but I don't think we should. Well, that's what I, that's what I would stop the, in. stop the bus because we have 21 out of the, out of the 22 saying yes, we need streetlights. Well, that's crime right. prevention and, and safety. Was it in fact? Um, 21 out of 22 that agreed? I don't know the exact number of the response. We had 17 responses. And how many agreed on 17? 16. 16. I'm sorry, I, I didn't know the exact number that you got to have. 16 out of 17. But even her response was... She, she accepted, she accepted she the line. Provisionally agreed. Is that correct? Right. Yeah. Can I ask a question about... I know she, on the map that you provided, there are four lights provided. Is there any analysis done as to the uniformity of illumination on the street? Correct. Okay. So it's fairly uniform even with the movement? Uh, the, uh, yes, and that, you know, we, we, we looked at that to see how many people we could actually move it one way or the other so that um, we could continue to keep the uniformity of the lighting along the street itself. Uh, with, without that particular street light, if we would just say not put it in, then you would have a, a very dark spot at the end of the cul de sac. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Clements, I have a question here as far as uh, Commissioner Phillips' comment about uh, checking with the lady first before any decision is being made. Um, if we do wait, then I'm assuming that there would be another three months before we need it again, and uh, we wouldn't be able to approve this for three more months. Is there some way that we can approve it today on a contingency? that it's acceptable to her? I, I would think so. Mm -hmm. I would, thank you, sir. I think you certainly appreciate that. Because you've got 16 out of 17 people. Yeah. It has to be a specific cool. condition that's currently yeah. delineated. But a, a, a specific condition could be that mm -hmm. she approves of it moving uh, to the property line. Is that right? where we're planning to move it. I think I would be concerned about that simply because, as they pointed out, if 16 and 17 are through, we're letting one person have veto power on the basis of something that, you know, we've, that accommodations have been attempted to be made for her. So I think, you know, it's a courtesy to let her know here's what we're doing, but I think it's the issue of approval. I, um, uh, I think that it was really all that important for her to be here today. Mm -hmm. I was saying, it's, it's a, I don't mean to interrupt, but I'll be out of line. However, it's a dungeon out there. It's dark. Okay? There are a lot of kids out there playing and whatnot. It's unsafe. I don't know how it, it ever got to be like it is, but it is. It's broken. That's what was destructive. And uh, like any, any other neighborhood, there's a lot of there's probably a lot of people who want it. You don't want it. Some something to happen out there uh, without one straight line. Like I said, 16 out of 17 to me is good. I don't want to put it in front of her house either. Okay, I would, well, probably I probably wouldn't want it in front of her. I would have to move it over. All right, well, let me restate what I mentioned earlier. We've gone to put the lights in. The woman had an object, objection of it being if she didn't want it in front of her house. And if I heard you correctly, oh, see, so you said you're going to move 10 or 15 feet. To the, to the property, right to the, try to get a yeah. property And all I'm suggesting is that to put the thing to bed, we go back to the woman and say, okay, we honored your request and here's where we're going to put it. So we just want to double check with you to see if there's any problems and then go ahead and put it in if there's no problem. Mm -hmm. We could we could do that. Um, and, and then if there's a problem, um, she can appeal, and, and then we can bring it back to this board for that one light. Yeah. So, I mean, to me, that sounds reasonable. What, what's the rest of you feel? 
Well, the city attorney is saying that it uh, might be difficult to put uh, some sort of a contingency in there. So, I don't know. How, how, I how think if you put a specific this? condition, that's fine. Leaving it subject to her approval, it would probably be better bring the item back after you get her buy off on her location of the poll. We can have a meeting next month or the next month be scheduled. But the condition upon her approving something that's kind of open ended, it would be better to have public works work with her, come to a resolution, and then present that resolution for approval. Could, could it be a, an approval with a condition that directs staff to work with his property owner just, just the right to the test of the ability? The civil sin, but it's just a good thing to raise them again for me to require. I think that would probably be something. Yeah, she said she approved That's my word. She said she approved of the lighting. She just didn't want it all in front of her house. So it's not that she didn't approve of it. So I don't see the. I think it's a lot of time actually being wasted on this discussion because she did approve it. So. I think we should take it for a vote. That's just I, I, I'd be happy, I would be happy to. That's what I would ask earlier um, to John. If um, My motion would be to approve the installation of street lights on Bunker Commons Court. Second motion. Okay, it's been properly moved and second that we uh, approve the relocation. Uh, ready to vote? We just start with a motion to, to install the light pursuant to the plan prepared by public work. I didn't say that. <laughs> but I'm of the belief that... Since time, there's an issue with the specific light... But that's one person out of 17 responses. There. Well, that's what I'm saying. Are you willing to approve as presented? As right. presented. And if they can work with them, I mean, so be it. They've already said they have made that gesture, so... Okay, those in favor say aye. 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 Motion is carried. Those opposed? Motion carried. Okay, let's go to the next item. It is six. Discussion for possible action to update the traffic schedule regarding speed limit changes on the following roadways. Deer Spring Way from Wapai Way to Grand Pico Parkway, 30 miles per hour. Okay, we want to do these one at a time here, OC? Uh, we, we could. Um, okay. We need to read the whole item first. Okay. This whole paragraph? <laughs> Garland Lane from Sombrero Road to Wallapai Way, 35 miles per hour. Egan Creek Drive from Doran Lane, Grand Teton Drive, 35 miles per hour. Elkhorn Road from Egan Crest Drive to Wallapai Way, 35 miles per hour. Elkhorn Road from Grand Canyon Drive on Durango Drive, 35 miles per hour. Farm Road from Schrumber Road to Wallapai Way, 35 miles per hour. Fort Apache Road from Duran Lane to Grand Teton Drive, 35 miles per hour. Fort Apache Road from Horse Drive to Iron Mountain Road, 40 miles per hour. Gilcrest Avenue from Wallapai Way to Osso Blanc Road, 35 miles per hour. Grand Canyon Drive from Grand Teton Drive to Horse Drive, 35 miles per hour. Grand Montico Road to 35 miles an hour. Horse Drive from US 95 to Fort Apache Road. Oh, excuse me, we skipped a 
Let's get the whole line. From Chamba, to... Okay, let me back up here. 35 miles per hour, Grand Montico Road. Parkway. Parkway from Durango Drive, Durango Drive to Oso Blanco Road. 30 miles per hour. Grand Teton Drive from Chamba. Chamba. Chamba Road to also Blanco Road, 35 miles an hour. Parse Drive from US 95 to Fort Apache Road, 40 miles per hour. Wallapai Way from Centennial Parkway to Deer Spring Way, 35 miles per hour. Severance Lane from Grand Canyon Drive to Oso Blanca Road, 35, 30 miles per hour. Chambura Road from Ann Road to Grand Teton Drive, 35 miles per hour. TP Lane from Ruan Lane to Oso Blanca Road, 30 miles per hour. Miles per hour. Okay. Um, most of these streets, in fact, almost every one of them, are fairly newly developed roadways. Uh, over the years, as the city was growing uh, and the developers were building the streets, as as the development grew, they they improved the, the existing old farm roads and into normal streets. And uh, many times, uh, uh, the developer that was putting in the signage would pick a speed limit and put it out there. And uh, over the years, we had a number of different speed limits on, on several segments of the same road, and and uh, and many of those were not appropriate. So what we've done is we've done studies on all of these roads, uh, come up with the appropriate speed, and actually we have posted these to the correct speed um, over a number of months, and, and in fact, probably just over the years. Uh, working with also the county uh, because the, some of the roads have uh, partial um, jurisdiction of the road is in the county and, and, and parts in the city. We work together to come up with the same speed limit on both sides so that we could uh, uh, have a more consistent network of roads with, with the correct speed limit. Uh, what we found was that we needed to get these into the schedule uh, so that uh, they can officially be uh, enforced as the, the adopted speed limit. And so we brought all these in because, they, like I said, they were new, uh, and the speed limits were now set where we have actually had a chance to field test the speed limit to see how close uh, traffic is, is working with those. And this is our recommendation what those speed limits should be for uh, all of these particular workers. <coughs> Any discussion? I'd like to move that the uh, item number six be approved. Second. Okay, it's been properly moved and second that we accept the recommendations by the Traffic Parking Commission. Ready for the question? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? opposed? Okay, let's go to item seven. Discussion of possible action to elect annual officer. Well, how many do we have missing uh, from the commission? Agree. Four, four missing. Um, we have three that are that would be eligible to be elected. Um, and that would be Commissioner Margo Erickson, uh, Commissioner David Turner, Stephen Turner, and uh, Commissioner Robert Hoban. Um, the other four are present. Is 
So, uh, it's I would, my feeling is we ought to wait till we get more tendency to have the election. Unless there's some problem with not doing it today. Uh, the, th that's an option, uh, obviously. Um, as we look today, um, because uh, we only have a the, the, the current chair is uh, David Stephen Turner. There is no co-chair, and so uh, as it as it result today, you had to chair the meeting because uh, of your seniority, and so um, uh, we can wait to the next meeting if, if that's your desire uh, as a commissioner to make that uh, decision on who should chair and co-chair, uh, vice chair. Okay, well, that's my motion, and that's my thoughts, that we should uh, delay it, and uh, the person that's been the chair, I think he only had one or two meetings. Cause we don't, how many meetings did we have last year? One. Yeah, so it's not fair to him to, uh, in my opinion, for him to just have one meeting and then he's out. So I make a motion that we... Uh, Delay this, table it till we have our next meeting. Second. All of those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Any, any opposed? Motion is Okay, we're on item number eight citizen participation. Public comments on this portion of the agenda must be limited to matters within the jurisdiction of the Commission. No subject may be acted upon by the Commission unless that subject is on the agenda and is scheduled for action. If you wish to be heard, give your name or the record for the record and the amount of discussion on any single subject, as well as the amount of time and single speaker is allowed may be limited. Okay, hearing nothing, uh, I move the meeting be adjourned. Thank you.